Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back and this is the last session, uh, sixth session of uh, week 2, second week of our course on uh, marketing management part 1. And uh, this particular week's overall title is uh, business environment and strategy. And as you have realized when we talk about environment, we talk about both internal and external environment. Now, as promised, I am now going to take up uh, a sort of a case study. Uh, this is almost uh, real. Uh, I have only changed the names, etcetera, a little bit for confidentiality reason. So, uh, for example, uh, there is a this uh, company in electrical contracting named after me, uh, JC Electrical Contractors <laughs> Limited, and we will see how JC Electrical Contractors Limited uh, will analyze its competition uh, or as we call it competitive landscape and how it will map uh, the current and future possible competitors and how they will actually formulate and deploy their strategy. Now, this company uh, was founded by 1997 uh, by me and my wife is now the current CFO. And it is mainly engaged in, now by the way that uh, me and my wife we are managing this company is not a reality today, but uh, at the, at today it is an imagination, but there is no reason why it cannot become a, a, a reality uh, 2 years from now. So, this company does electrical contracting for heavy industrial installations, commercial and office buildings, uh, educational institutions, uh, public works and many specialized systems including maintenance services. It mainly competes in the eastern region, uh, Bengal, Bihar, Orissa that side for electrical contracting industry. And it is a well established company known for good customer service. Now, if we look at the environment of the electrical contracting industry, it is a, a growing industry as Indian economy expands. Uh, it is regulated by local uh, electricity rules and there are a number of laws which are national laws as well as uh, state laws. Uh, so, with respect to safety uh, and with respect to uh, consumer rights, with respect to laws of contracting, there are there is a framework in which uh, so, a, a legal framework uh, which is uh, a, a within which a regulatory framework within which such companies operate. There is lot of change happening in this industry like most other industries uh, due to uh, expansion of the economy, uh, due to crossover of uh, competition and we will see it just now. But as you can uh, immediately realize that this electrical contracting industry as such is quite a fragmented industry. That means, you go to any state or you go to any city or you go to any industry, there will be number of contractors who will be uh, competing with each other. Now, Porter's five forces model uh, we had discussed uh, earlier. Now, let us see how it actually uh, uh, operates. So, here is the uh, uh, on the left hand side as you see there, this is the uh, the electrical uh, wholesalers who supply uh, the contactors or switches or starters and so on or uh, lights and fixtures and so on. And this is the uh, competitive arena, the rivals. So, there is uh, uh, my company, there is uh, Professor Mishra's company and there are many other companies, Datta's electrical construction company, Ramji electric. Well, imaginary names, but quite real. I mean, if you go to Delhi or you go to Calcutta, this is how it will be. And then there are buyers, 
as we have said that commercial buyers, industrial clients, public sector and private sector residences. So, as you can see mostly for a contracting company, the, the buyers are the builders. These builders can be for public uh, large projects, can be for private residence projects or it can be factories or offices. And uh, then there is a new entrant coming which is the solar energy based competition which is coming. Uh, and there are of course, uh, substitution which is non licensed or unlicensed uh, local small electrical contactors. So, if we look at each one of these uh, blocks, the intensity of rivalry is uh, very high. Uh, the bargaining power of buyers is very high because there are so many uh, people who are competing. So, more the intensity of rivalry, higher is the bargaining power of, uh, of uh, customers. And uh, then barrier to entry is obviously low, because that is the uh, nature of most service industries. And in this particular uh, industry, because there are even existence of unlicensed electrical contractors. So, the uh, and again as you see, uh, the lower the barriers to entry, higher will be the intensity of rivalry. So, this is, this is how it goes. And uh, so, if we go to power of buyers will be high, threat of substitute at this moment will be nothing very important. If we then, this is uh, a, one of the ways uh, we can uh, study industry attractiveness. So, here we put all the factors, degree of regulation, degree of technological innovation, uh, intensity of competition, industry growth rate, size of potential market and, uh, uh, and then we can give relative weightage. So, uh, for example, here relative weightage has been given, high relative weightage to uh, intensity of competition and industry growth rate, both are positive uh, that and, and, and high. So, that is why even though there are many competitors, people are still coming in because uh, the industry growth rate is high. So, this is one of the paradoxes that there are already more people playing in that, but more and more people like uh, bees getting attracted towards honey, uh, the uh, more uh, uh, the high growth, high potential is the market, higher number of competitors will fly into. And this is where actually we give rating to uh, your own uh, situation. So, uh, therefore, if your degree of regulation uh, and uh, degree of technological innovation, all these with respect to these factors. Um, you, you can then give uh, rating. Uh, so, this is the importance of the factor and this is the rating of the factor in this particular situation. And therefore, that will give you a composite situation. So, 69.5 we are getting uh, multiplied that means weight into rating, which means that this is a fairly good uh, competitive, highly competitive, but uh, attractive uh, uh, area to play in. You, you can also do this with respect to uh, competitive strength of uh, JC electrical company. So, there we can take the success factors like management, financial strength, customer service, brand image, marketing. We can give factor weights and we can then find the rating of JC uh, company and that gives us 74. That means, it shows that uh, this is uh, 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 the obviously as you can see the higher this score, uh, the better is uh, uh, that company's uh, competitive strength. Similarly, higher is this score, uh, more attractive is that particular industry. Very simple uh, two factor analysis this is called and uh, this tells us that uh, whether you want to play in a particular a competitive arena and to play in that market, what is that you need to develop, what kind of competencies that uh, you have already discussed core competencies, right. Yes. So, what kind of competencies you need to have 
uh, these are the competencies um, and, and their results. So, uh, having got this, uh, we can now see, uh, uh, we can actually uh, put uh, the company in this uh, on this GE matrix. This also we have discussed uh, earlier. So, if we plot industry attractiveness on that side and uh, uh, the, uh, the strength uh, on this side, then uh, so, so as you see here, this is coming from these two charts. The industry attractiveness was 69.5, the competitive strength was 74 and that can be now computed here uh, 69 versus or oh, this should actually go up a little bit more, uh, this is a little bit of a typo. But as you can see, you can position and now you can do this for all the competitors and you can actually put them here and you can understand that who are your direct competitors and who are your indirect competitors, who are the competitors who might flow into your segment and so on. So, as you see this company is in a high strength uh, uh, position because this is the company's uh, competitive strength. So, all companies coming on the this side of 60 will say that they are very strong competitive, but there will be number of people who will be here. So, and, uh, and there will be number of people who will be in these uh, blues, uh, because those are companies who are high on uh, competitive strength as well as in an industry which is quite attractive. So, depending on where the number of competitors get clustered, the dynamics of competition changes, the nature of competi competition changes. So, uh, if we summarize, uh, put it qualitatively from, uh, from this earlier chart, if we want to now uh, uh, therefore, describe that what is the uh, competitive situation of JC company, it is shows that it is in an arena in an industry which is intensely competitive low barriers to entry, many competitors, basic of competition, basis of competition, the here we are bringing in more information collected from the industry, like what is the, this is a new factor which is introduced, that what is the basis of competition, what, how com, uh, customers uh, choose a particular supplier. So, in for example, in public sector, uh, with where uh, JC company uh, uh, mostly operates, this we have discussed described earlier in this session. Uh, uh, as you know in public sector, uh, most purchases are done through um, a tendering process and the lowest price bid uh, on among the technically qualified suppliers uh, uh, will win the contract. In such a situation, this is in the basis of competition, lowest price and you need to be lowest uh, uh, popularly known as L1, even when your quality must be above standard, quality must be acceptable uh, as per the specification and preferably will go beyond, should go beyond because uh, often uh, customers make this in, in public sector, they make a choice by saying uh, L1 T1, that means a company which is lowest in price and highest in technical rating, that is the, uh, the most preferred combination. So, L1, uh, T1 may not uh, be true for in, in every case, but you cannot be uh, L1 and T5, then possibly according to the rules of computation of uh, the price bids or commercial evaluation, you will lose out. Sometimes uh, often there is a two stage process, where uh, first they will take all the people and rank them technically and suppose there are 15 competitors, they will say okay, we are only going to take T1 to T5, that means 5 uh, top competitors in terms of technical features and technical capabilities will be considered for the second uh, round. And among those T1 to T5, the person who will then become uh, L1 will be the winner. So, uh, therefore, this is a kind of a paradoxical, earlier we used to think that price and quality are correlated, that means higher price means higher quality, lower price means lower quality, 
but here it, it is just the opposite that is what is demanded by this market, which is that uh, lower price higher quality combination and the most preferred being lowest price highest quality. So, uh, reputation is often based on that combination. Now, if you if we continue uh, our competitive analysis from the given data, you will know that this is a kind of industry where there are uh, very few large national contractors, mostly there are regional contractors and direct competitors include uh, Professor Mishra's company, XYZ electrical company, Ramji electrical or etcetera, etcetera. And for example, his company specializes in solar uh, photovoltaic. Uh, so, which means that this is a, a challenger company coming in with the latest technology or a new form of technology. So, this is a company which will change the nature of the competition and uh, most competitors are doing residential construction, whereas JC electrical is focused more on commercial and public sector. This we will analyze later, what is the meaning of that. And uh, target market is all residential, commercial, uh, public sector. Price sensitivity is high, uh, especially in public sector bidding, which I discussed just now. Growth rate is higher in residential construction, because uh, since uh, mid 2010, the uh, industrial growth rate has sort of been quite sluggish. Not new, many new investments are coming in, in um, uh, facilities of uh, commercial or industrial type. The market where JC electrical pay, plays a, is going through a slow growth phase, whereas an adjacent market which is the residential construction is going through a high growth phase at the moment. And uh, current customer needs are price, superior finish, on time completion, initial installation. These are again sorts of uh, uh, data from that market which you have to gather and you have to understand that how customers rank uh, these various requirements. That will be a very good input to your competitive strategy final uh, formulation and deployment. And future customer needs are you know uh, assurance for renovation add on and so on. So, there is some data here that how JC companies uh, revenues have grown from 2001 to 2005, um, current ratios you know uh, current asset to current liability ratio. When in a later uh, uh, week we discuss about the finance part of marketing. Uh, then maybe you know uh, the importance of these will become at that time we can revisit uh, this particular uh, organization and their situation. So, this is the debt to equity ratio. This is very important today in today's market which is sluggish and liquidity uh, is low. Uh, this is called the free cash flow. So, the as you see JC company has uh, a problem with free cash flow. It had an excellent performance in 2002, but usually free cash flow can go through a, a big swings. So, currently uh, it is uh, uh, facing a lot of squeeze in free cash flow and we will just see uh, why that happens is because of this, this average collection period. If the collection period goes up, then the free cash flow goes down. So, as you see here they are, so uh, this is an interesting thing later on when we discuss uh, about uh, the financial strategy with respect to marketing strategy, we will see that even though uh, this uh, uh, ratio that we I showed current ratio, this is current asset by current liability. So, uh, uh, receivables customer receivable is a kind of uh, asset. So, but uh, it is not always true that a better current ratio is that means having more current asset. Is, uh, is is often not a strength, it actually is a weakness. So, the, this is a depiction of that, that as your collection period goes up. So, you may be having a lot of customer receivable, but ultimately what makes sense is to have money in your bank. So, uh, uh, your competitive strength is more when you have free cash flow, higher free cash flow, because that gives you much better monoverability. So, 
uh, this uh, will always mean uh, if this going up means you will actually go into more debt and you will have more debt servicing and there are other various uh, we will discuss that in more detail when we discuss uh, in a later module this financial aspects of uh, uh, marketing. So, if we look at now we are now applying that SWOT which we saw uh, in a previous session uh, professor Mishra's session. Uh, uh, strengths are strong reputation for integrity, responsibility and reliability. So, is, as you can see these are some terminologies which are important for assessing strength of a competitor. Strong working relationship in the ecosystem meaning with suppliers and with other contractors. Uh, they are ahead in the experience curve, revenue increased by 2.6 percent. This is now uh, the core competence analysis. We have discussed the concept of core competence and as you can see here uh, the competence these are the attributes of the competence which makes that competence valuable. So, capability is this capability valuable? Is this capability rare? Is this cap capability costly to imitate? So, so, these are the points which uh, the uh, Prahlad Hamel framework uh, made it uh, very uh, useful uh, is the capability non substitutable competitive uh, consequences and performance implications. So, for example, here many contractors like the JC electrical are now using uh, software uh, the, and so master builder is one such software which uh, makes the process the construction process um, a, a lot more regulated a lot more planned and understands as the different uh, situations change it tells you that which is the uh, best critical path that needs to be followed or how the a particular delay can be overcome by uh, what is known as crashing the next uh, schedule. So, so these are some of the capabilities and, and, and then need this has been done. So, this is just an example uh, just a, a, a part uh, you have to look at your um, company and your competitors and then you have to determine that what are these uh, capabilities that you should list as the most important capabilities for competing effectively in that particular industry. And then you have to ask all these questions, this rareness, imitability, uh, uh, sustainability and so on. So, weakness, uh, the company's weakness is that it is not still very competitive with price war in the private sector. Uh, because in private sector as opposed to the tendering process uh, which we were discussing about closed uh, sealed bid uh, in private sector often negotiation is done. So, one competitor is played against the other competitor and it sort of uh, prices are brought down, down, down. So, not all companies are comfortable with that situation. So, JC company is not competitive with price wars in private sector and uh, uh, it, it has a declining uh, net operating profit after tax and uh, it has a uh, this collection period uh, is high and as a result because in normally in this kind of public sector projects this uh, collection is uh, uh, collection period actual collection period is often elongated due to various reasons. And they have a high ratio of public to private that means 90 percent of their business is coming from public sector, 10 percent is coming for. So, what it means is that they are not taking enough advantage of the higher rate of growth in the private sector project. And, uh, and this is another uh, uh, recognition that medium voltage, they may be very strong in low voltage application, but in medium voltage application that means, uh, today uh, many large projects uh, they are uh, heating uh, air conditioning uh, and such applications uh, use medium voltage motors. So, you need medium voltage controllers and you need medium voltage switch gear to handle those uh, which means 6 kV, 11 kV 
and that area. There are some segments where uh, uh, even uh, uh, voltages like 690 volt etcetera are coming into picture due to various other technical reasons. So, anything above 415 volt 240 volt 415 volt combination is con considered as medium voltage. In medium voltage there is like uh, low medium voltage and high medium voltage different uh, factors are there. Uh, so, usually electrical contractors uh, most of the time and in a domestic situation uh, everything is uh, low voltage 415, 240 volt. Um, so, domestic market is does not need medium voltage that much, but large public sector uh, segments are now moving in many applications more and more into medium voltage. So, threats, so you see we saw strength, we saw weakness, threats are low barriers to entry, increased price of raw materials like uh, copper, silver etcetera and supply shortage. So, key strategic marketing issues are normally this is how you have to formulate that how can JC company Go. expand into private projects, expand into other sectors and other geographic areas. So, these are the various expansion opportunities, either uh, expand into the type of business you are in and whether you are you can play in the adjacent uh, businesses like you are in public sector, whether you can go into private projects, you are in industrial projects, whether you could go into commercial residential or private residential projects and uh, whether uh, you can keep up with your competitors. So, should JC company, these are the strategic marketing issues usually we ask um, and this case is giving you a framework that how to do the analysis and what are the questions to ask. So, here we are asking that should JC company reduce its ratio of public to private projects, should it become a general contractor, should it broaden its services uh, offered to include these are new uh, competitive areas, emerging competitive areas home security system, medium voltage installation, installation of alternative energy like solar energy power sources and expand into other high growth areas in neighboring states uh, uh, beyond the eastern states. So, uh, from that analysis and I will show you how that analysis is done, uh, one can come to one have to you know you cannot do everything at a time. So, some uh, focusing becomes necessary for good marketing strategy. So, you have to uh, reduce ratio of public private jobs, expand geographically and offer advanced technical services. These are uh, from this uh, range of questions that we have asked in the previous two slides, we focus on these three. And how do we do that? Uh, among these three again, we want to understand that which one is more important. Uh, uh, the, so, we have to rank them as first, second, third uh, priority. So, this is how we will do it. We will take uh, criteria, profitability, uh, growth in revenues, competitive advantage, investment required, overall riskiness. So, as you see, some of them are positive criteria and some are negative criteria. So, that means scoring high here will actually reduce your overall score. This is the sign is very important sometimes otherwise your whole analysis will go wrong. So, profitability reduce ratio of private to public jobs after analysis various kinds of uh, financial outcome uh, and uh, possibility etcetera. So, doing the a combination of the, uh, the SWOT and uh, then the consequence analysis will bring you to this kind of a matrix. So, here you can see that profitability is best in advanced technical services. So, it is that, that score is high and then growth in revenue obviously is very important 
and, and therefore, uh, that can happen easily if you expand geographically. You can uh, correlate this also with the NSOF metrics that we discussed in a, uh, last week, where we had taken existing product, new product and existing market and new market and created different uh, competitive alternatives. So, by doing this analysis therefore, we can see that advanced technical services like medium voltage or like uh, uh, alternative energy uh, or getting into home security system, these uh, will perhaps give the best uh, strategy uh, at this moment to JC electrical. So, you should again view this uh, step by step and as you will see this is a, a real actual deployable methodology, where we do first competitive uh, situation analysis and from that we derive finally, that what is the best course of action right in front of us, what is the second uh, best course of auction and what is the third best course of action. And we have to see that this we came to these three from a series of other various alternatives. So, first you develop all the possible alternatives, uh, summarize them or prioritize them in three focus possibilities and then you can further analyze and understand which is the best, second best, third best and so on. So, that kind of brings us to the end of uh, uh, the second week and uh, during which we have uh, showed you how to do internal analysis in terms of core competencies, strengths and weaknesses. And we have showed you how to do external analysis in terms of the environment, uh, political, economic, social, technical and so on, as well as opportunities and threats. And then we have discussed how you actually put these external and internal together and look at current earnings and current financial result and future uh, needs and see how do we go from present to future, which is the best route to follow, uh, and which is the second best route and which is the third best route. So, uh, these are some of the things that we have done during this week. I would like you to uh, therefore, also understand at this stage that there are many approaches to uh, strategic uh, supremacy or competitive uh, strength. Uh, marketing factors are to be understood, concepts are to be understood and they have to be properly uh, fused together to create the uh, best marketing uh, approach. So, in the following week, a uh, couple of weeks, we will look at that how do we uh, gather data, analyze the data and how do you actually uh, use uh, the data in different uh, marketing situation. So, having introduced to you in the last two weeks, all the major conceptual building blocks, we will now go into deeper into each block and also how these uh, blocks interact with each other and to give you a much deeper, better understanding of marketing. Thank you.